Hey gang, Professor Fieser here, and today we're talking about Sonar Cube specifically activating a Sonar Cube scan with GitHub Actions. GitHub Actions are GitHub's version of a pipeline, sometimes called a workflow, all terms we can use synonymously. An action itself is a step that's going to occur within one of these flows, like a job can have many GitHub Actions that result in some desired results, such as maybe a build or a series of tests or all the above, series of tests and a build. Workflows can be set up in a parallel manner. They can run um, synchronously at the same time. Uh, it's however you want to design it. We're gonna just scratch the surface of GitHub Actions here, but we are gonna look at how to configure Sonar Cube as a GitHub action. So I'm sitting here in a thing called the GitHub Marketplace. The GitHub Marketplace is where you go to shop around for pre-configured actions. And if I scroll down, it describes what this tool ultimately does. Uh, it defines, uh, you have to have a configuration file. So they say in the root of your GitHub repo, you're gonna want a sonar project.properties. Uh, I ended up sonar project key. That is not a token like I thought it was. It's not an API key that you have to generate. When you create a project up in Sonar Cube Cloud, in my case, it automatically made that. And I can show that to you here in a moment. Uh, sources, you just put dot, and that's all that you have to have there. But that is required, or the GitHub action will fail. That's in the root of the repo. Here's an example of a GitHub workflow or pipeline, however you want to know it. This file must appear in .github slash workflows, and what you want to call it is up to you, but it's going to end in .yml. So sonarcube.yml is a fine name. On describes the trigger situation. When do we run this? What they're suggesting is on a push and on a pull request, we might want this to run. You can describe the branches that you want to have associated with that particular, in this case, push. With a pull request, it's what action associated with a pull request do you want to trigger ultimately this workflow. Jobs, um, we only have one job here. The job is called Sonar Cube. Okay. Um, I know that because if I look down here, there's nothing else indented along with Sonar Cube. It's the only job. Uh, the job has steps. Steps are the actions themselves. So here's an action. Here's an action. Actions are delineated by those hyphens. The first action is a clone. So what we're going to do is create a container from a image called Ubuntu Latest, which is maintained by GitHub. It's a name maintained by GitHub, uh, which would be probably Ubuntu 22 or 24 um, O2 LTS. What we want to do into that container, you don't assume that your code, your repo just shows up in it. It has to be cloned into it. And that's what that does. That's a git command that clones all of your repo repository into the particular location. Next, uh, this is our second action. The Sonar Cube Scan uh, uses, you have to customize this, I believe the action version, if you scroll up, it took me a minute to find this. It's right there at the time of publishing version 5.20. See how it's highlighted there? That's what would go there. You get rid of the alligator mouths, the chicken lips. This here, the sonar token, you do have to generate over on your profile. I can show you where you do that. Sonar host URL, this took me forever to figure out. Um, sonar is either hosted, so maybe you have it running in a cloud, a private, public, who cares? And you may have a URL that points to your software running. Alternatively, you can use Sonar Cloud. You can use like their server effectively in their cloud. And if you're going to do that, 
you simply use, I have it in mind, I'm gonna click over to my example. You simply use in the workflow here, <clears throat> you can hard code HTTPS sonarcloud.io. I have it highlighted there in line 24. So the only thing left then, you can see I have the version set, would be what's this here? We don't ever want to put secrets into our repository. That would be a no-go. So what we can do instead is in GitHub, come into settings. Uh, you can come into secrets and variables and come down to actions. Um, right down here, repository secrets. Sonar token. Um, you create a new repository secret. That's the name of the environmental variable you want to have available for this particular repository. And then paste in the secret, hit add secret, you're done. So if I put in like Jerry, hello, add secret. I just created Jerry. It has the value hello associated with it. And I can call it, if I go back to my workflow, it would be secrets.jerry would reflect as hello. You put a dollar sign in front of it along with double mustache brackets, and that's how you call it into your actual workflow file. Mine is called sonarcube.yml. Okay, mine is set up for pretty much any push, any change to my repository is going to trigger this to actually run. Now there's one other change or one other thing you got to do to make this work. Um, this token itself, if you're wondering well, where does that get generated? Right here, sonarcloud.io slash account slash security. If you come out here initially, it looks like you would just log in with GitHub. That's sonarcloud.io. They have a couple different products and it can be a little confusing as to exactly where you go to create this account. But you do that, and then what you're on the hook to do is actually set up a repository. So they ask it for your name, they call it an organization. Maybe it is an organization in your case, but in my case, it was just my name on my GitHub account. Uh, and then you give it a repository. In this case, API Quest is a silly little project I'm having fun with. Here, API Quest is loaded into SonarCube. So they actually ask for the GitHub repository um, and they sync it here. And actually, automatically, they'll start watching your project like if it's public. And any sort of disturbances will automatically cause this product to run out here in this cloud. So if I click on this product here, you can see my analyses. If I click on my full analysis, the idea here is every time the code is changed, we want to analyze that code to determine if there are issues. In this case, it's saying, hey, maybe you want to remove out certain commented code. There's redundant returns. There's, you're disclosing a secret potentially here, right? So there's, here are ways to increase your security footprint, um, as well as potentially, here's potentially, uh, uh, you wrote some sloppy code and it might be subject to different attacks in this case. Uh, they're suggesting maybe turn on CSRF protections. Measures are ways to fix things. They give you ratings and whatnot. But this is, these types of analysis is ongoing. And what we're trying to do is set this up so that when we make a change in GitHub, GitHub goes and effectively webhooks or taps this service automatically and makes the analyses run. Now, what I was saying is this cloud tool by default 
automatically will run. If you go into analysis method by default, automatic analysis is turned on, which means it's, I was saying before, monitors your repository and when there are changes, it does an analysis. I've shut this off to make the cloud act more like a server that you might be running yourself or whatever the situation is where you want GitHub to dictate when that tool runs. I mean, you might be paying for CPU cycles, you know, every time that that security tool runs, you might cost you some cents and you might be using GitHub actions to limit how often that tool actually picks up and runs. So the triggers become the conditionals by which we restrict the running. And there's lots of scenarios we could imagine there. That might just be one. In, in any event, that is turned off. The token that we started talking about, you actually generate from, if I remember correctly, the root of your account here. You come into security, and right here you can generate a token. So I made one called GitHub API Quest token. It's just, it's a long string of gibberish. I'll make one I can delete. Delete me. So there it is. By the time you see this video, it's invalidated. So we're gonna copy that to the clipboard. But again, if we wanted to inject that into our workflow, we saw how to do that. You come into settings, uh, you come into secrets and variables, actions. We wouldn't define Jerry, we'd define sonar token with that updated value that we have up there. Okay, so the very last thing then would just be seeing it run. So if I come out and look at my projects, here is API Quest. Uh, API Quest, the last analysis is June 24th at 7.23 p.m. So what I can do is come over to the project and I'm just gonna tweak the project ever so slightly. So we'll just put a, uh, we'll get rid of this trailing line at the end of that readme. And that's actually enough. I'm gonna commit right to master or main. And if I click on actions here, you can actually see it running. Here's the update readme main workflow that's running. There's the sonar cube action. And believe it or not, that is it in order to get it to work. It's the configuration file. It's creating your workflow and it's building that token and making sure that your token is secured using best practice techniques um, inside of GitHub. I.e. don't put your token directly in your code, call it in from that repository. As this is wrapping up, it's just finished. I got the green check, that means it was successful. I now have a log inside of GitHub of my report. Uh, I also, if I needed to, could come out here, I'll hit refresh, and we should see that a new analysis took place. There we go, at 7.55, which 7.56 right now. Hey gang, that was a lot in a relatively small amount of time. So any of the links and resources uh, things such as the GitHub action that's found in the marketplace, links over to Sonar Cube, uh, as well as a link to API Quest, the project that I have up here that we actually were running our action against. All of that is down in the comment section. Be sure to check that out. If you enjoyed this video, give me a like and of course hit subscribe. I'll see you on the next episode of Code with Feaser.